Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to another Profit Team Consulting Facebook Live. I know it's still morning in Chicago, uh, but it's afternoon here in New York. So uh, I can't say again, you know, the last few of these I've had, it's just been such a pleasure for me to have some of my friends and, and people that I've looked up to and peers in the industry um, that I spent so many years with. So it's a pleasure to have the two Johns, as I called it, in our uh, little promo, right, Junior? Yeah. Absolutely. Catalano from Bionic Auto Parts. So I'm welcome. Ex I'm excited to be here, Rob. Like I thought these this was a yeah. great thing you're doing with these uh with these live videos. I think it's awesome. I think it's gonna snowball into a real big thing for you. And man, it's just it's it's great. It's great. I think it's uh yeah happy to be here. I'm excited. I'm excited. Appreciate the invite, Rob. Definitely. You know, long time yeah. friend. Yeah, uh, know you forever in the industry and been you know. Especially, uh, you know, now that you're a Python too, you know, that's. Yeah. <laughs> now, that, you know, now that we got the results. Yeah, out. <laughs> yeah the, the tests are in. And apparently I'm a better friend now. <laughs> and I just want to throw this out there. The only thing, since you became a Python, they're getting rid of Christopher Columbus. I don't know what's going on. You know? <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, and you know well, what anyway. I think, Junior, I really like about these is it's, it's not that we're on here and I'm trying to sell a product or I'm doing something. I, I, I'm trying to just get on here and give a little bit back. And I think the older that I get, the more I realize to, to give more than you take. And to get on here and share the information and just make this an enjoyable thing is kind of what I'm after. I'm not here trying to pitch something. I'm here to just talk about, I just, I love this business and I love the people in it. You know, and we go back. I was trying to think last night um, about, I mean, I mean, how far back it goes, but it has to be. 99. Yeah, I was going to say. 2000, right around there. Yeah, I was I was thinking like late 90s to me. Yeah, for sure. I, I don't know when it started. When URG started in Denver. <laughs> there were some good times in the spotted dog. <laughs> yeah, Denver, yes. Yeah. I, I forgot the name of the place. It's a lot of dog and a lot of long nights there. But that's where the, that's where relationships are built, though. That's where it all started for all of us. We had our own little crew over there. You know, we used to go out and you know, I was, I was the young buck then too. So I'd look up to all you guys and be like, ah, oh, man, I want to be like Rob. I want to get out there. What a good, you know, I want to know all the people he knows. <laughs> yeah, well, right. that's how I felt about your dad. So I was lucky enough to get out there. And you know, run with th with that crowd. So I was sitting there looking up to those guys, right. and not only I think, you know, hey, I, but to be able to rely on them and call them up and say, hey, how did you do this or what did you do this, and and the ability right. for those guys, like you know, those two, Mike Colston was another one, for, a big one for me from Don's Automotive Mall. Yeah. There was some guys there that just yeah. really helped mentor me. Um, that I'll never, I'll never forgive. Um, you know, or never forget, right? To sure. to make sure that I that I, you know, pay them the homage that they deserve for for what I got. And I'm sure, John, you've got stories. You know, oh, yeah. you the best education you can get. I mean, you know, all the the groups and hanging out with everybody and just the conversations. And I mean, I I got more out of any all of that than anything else in the industry. I think so. Yeah. Definitely a definitely a plus. Yeah, I think you know, as as my you know my dad bringing us to those things, it was a good way to get us like engaged in what was going on in the industry and kind of just you know that like I said, that's where our relationships were built, like back there and just getting to know you and getting to know a, a bunch of different people there. And, well, and uh, and then the the build of the PRP and the build right, of the trailer and, yeah. and then the commerce and the and the relationship in those days between then Bionic and when I was at Jerry Brown's and, and all those things that just helped build this whole network that has now just become, you know, you know, between the PRP and the Midwest runner and the RCD cross docks and all these lines and all these systems, everybody is partners with everybody now. Right. And those are going to be detrimental yeah. to the independent recycle recycler is, you know, especially with, in the future, you got got to be part of that. To, yeah, I mean, you don't have to, but it's it's good to be part of that to get the supply and you know build the relationships and you know meet people and 
just uh, you know find new ways to do business. I mean, I thought that's that's what it's all about. So yeah. So well, you know, like all the programs we we all started, or you know, we were all involved in, they all exploded. I mean, everybody's seen how good things were running, and they all want to jump on with you, which is you know, it was a great thing. You know, all these things, you know. Uh, URGs, DRAs, whatever you want to call them, TPRPs. These were all great things for our industry and it brought everybody together. Really did. Yep. You don't see that in a lot of industries, you know, where they all get together. Now you're seeing more and more of it, but I think we, we were like the founders of this. Of this uh, and well, to share, people get together, but everyone keeps their stuff all tight vested, right? right. To, to me, to there, I mean, it was here's the open door, come on over. The doors open anytime, right? There's no secrets here. It's you know, to me, it's just been hard work, right? That's the secret, right? Is is work hard, right? Yeah. You buy some cars, you take them apart. There's no secret here. Yeah. yeah. Um, it's who wants to work the hardest. So tell me the beginnings, John. Right. So well, I, I, I'd like to know a little bionic history. I can. I can. I'm going to start out with before bionic a little bit because. Uh, uh, my father was originally, he had two salvage yards. One, he started out with a partner and the second one, me and him partnered up at a place called Cats Auto Parts. Uh, we, he sold that. I said, Hey dad, I said, let's, let's expand. Let's find something bigger because this place is so small. We couldn't do anything. Both of us were still working. He had a job. I had a job. He had his job at night. I had my job in the morning. So. You know, we found a location and we started. What year out. was it? What year was that? It was 1977. Okay. 1977. My brother Tony uh, was involved with another business that my dad had. It was uh, the ironworks business, and uh, he actually closed it down, and and we all started Bionic together. Him, my dad, my brother, and my and uh, and myself, and then I have an older brother, Jerry. Is uh, which he's been involved in some of the industry, he's been around in some of the meetings and stuff like that. And uh, he's our CPA and he kind of stayed on that side of it. He has his own firm and company and stuff like that. So, and yeah, we've been there uh, 45 years. We started out chunk by chunk, you know, enough room to do this, enough room to do that. And as soon as the property came up, we bought it. We said we even told people that we wanted their property before they even were going to sell, you know, and that's how we started to expand. We end up with, I don't know, over 20 something acres that way, you know, and uh, it became very successful. We were in a, more of a, a mid range car at the beginning, more of a junker car. And then we seen the industry and what was happening. People couldn't fix their car. So we said, you know what, we got to get involved with the shops and start selling to the shops and, and repair garages. And so we started looking at the year cars they were requesting. And that's how we end up. You know where we're at today just keep when, when did you join like peer group type of things like i said i'm not looking well, to like promote profit team consulting here but like how important was it for you then to get in with a group of other guys and talk about and build wasn't howard nesbaum your first one well, howard nesbaum was our first consultant and you know he came to we had like a little convention at our yard uh, I don't know. I think it was through ARA maybe. And uh, we were really ready for anything like that. We were really, you know, boneyard more than anything. But uh, we had hired uh, Howard and Howard came out and he sat down with us and he told us a lot of stuff we didn't listen to, you know, which I was sorry we didn't. But after it all started to evolve, we said, man, we should have did this a long time ago. Yeah, you should have listened to that guy. Yeah, <laughs> we should have listened to him. <laughs> you know, but you know, then things changed, and you know, I was in one department, and my brother shared the the sales. I helped with the sales, but I was really the buyer at the beginning, and he became the buyer in '89, I believe, and I took over the sales in '89, and uh, it was a great change. You know, we both were we were good at what we did when we finally found the spot we were in, and uh, and my father, he of course, he passed away in '91, so. Uh, we really had to kick butt to keep the place going and everything else, and and it worked out. You know, he, he taught us a lot, you know, and uh, God bless him, and you know, but we went out from there. So and that's when we started expanding quite a bit. And then Jim Counts came along. 
And then Jim Counts came along, great guy. Well, you know, I think some of the things he told us were, you know, the best. I mean, he walked in our place and he says, get rid of this stuff. You guys are running the museum over here. You know, <laughs> yeah. I still remember that. Yeah. So, yeah. And then he says, don't throw it out. Just lower the price. You'll get rid of all of it. You know, and it's some of the things we did, you know. And, yeah. and we followed Jim for years and years and years, you know. And uh, yeah. it's been a great relationship with him. And that's when you started bringing me and Anthony to those meetings, too, when we were yeah, uh, and, young. Yeah, we were yeah, going. every meeting we had, we always had our sons there right. to educate themselves on what we're doing, we're trying to do, and where we're going. And and that was that was a great uh, great education for them. That was better than a college education. It was it was the best education you could get for a yeah. young man yeah. yeah. in the industry. Yeah. You're not really working in the, in that field, and they, you know they're learning stuff, and they loved it, and it was just great. Yeah, I think the the first one I went to was in Jim's garage. And actually, Kunkel and Lee were both in my profit team groups. Lee was still at his dad's. Kunkel was at American. Right. We were in Jim's garage in the middle of Texas. And again, like you said, um, priceless. The people that you meet oh. and the people that were in there. And um, it, it, it is. It, and uh, and that's kind of why I want to do this kind of not that I, I want to I want to date you, John, and say that you're a legend oh, in the industry, okay. but but it's this, people got to know this, right? People yeah. need to know how this came, and you know times are changed and things are different and whatever. But the relationship part of it and learning from your peers will never be gone. Right. No. Right. So many people that you know that gave you that little niche that helped you a lot when you right. you know. And I was always the kind of guy that after I went through some of these meetings, I came back like a bull. You know, I wanted to do everything. And, uh, you know, I, my brother used to say, slow down, you're going too fast. You know, whatever. You know, which he was right. I was like driving everybody nuts in the whole company trying to uh, accomplish what we learned, you know. Right. But and, that's uh, a good match that if you were, you good. know, Tony is slow and steady, you're let's go, go, go. That's a really good thing. You push yeah. him to go a little faster and he gets you to slow down. That's a really good marriage. Right, right. <laughs> so, right. Yeah, no, and, you know, and, and, you know, as brothers and family, we, you know, we got along pretty good, you know, so, and that's tough, you know, it's like being in a marriage, you know, if you, one gets mad at the other, the next thing you know, somebody wants a divorce, you know, and, and uh, it worked out well for us, so. Yeah. Now, Tony, uh, Anthony, and, and John Jr. They're they're very close, and uh, that worked out well. It's working out well now too. So, tell them a little bit about the last expansion that we did with the with the yard, the back hill, how that all oh. uh, that really put us over the you know that that put us over the top. Oh yeah, was, we were actually uh, <laughs> expanding at the time, and I was trying to get uh, this company that owned the property to lease it to us. And they were already agreed, you know, they were there, but the only problem is they had a, a, a violation with the city and the city was going after them. And I had spotted it in a tax sale. So I says, Hey, I'm going for this thing. I went after it and I ended up buying it. And then the problem was it was 16 feet elevated higher than it should have been. And we had to go in there and it took a year for us. We did it ourselves, the boy, Tony, me, and we put this thing together. We took 16 feet of land, a dirt off this property. And we made a deal at the end with the guy who actually owned it. He came in, there was sand, which is very little sand in, in Chicago. It's mostly clay. So he, the railroad had back filled with sand. He took all the sand out, which gave us the spot to put the 16 feet of dirt in. Yeah, I was gonna say, where do you where do you put that much dirt in Chicago? I mean, no, fifteen acres of sixteen feet of dirt. Yeah, yeah. we found a place to put it, so it worked out real well. And then you know, we we're driving bulldo- Me and Anthony were driving bulldozers and dump trucks at at, at six o'clock till ten o'clock at night in the middle yeah, of the yeah. city, back and forth dumping dirt. Yeah, yeah there was some there was some crazy stuff that went on, you know. Because we, we were we weren't construction workers. I mean, we were running excavators and bulldozers. I was on a bulldozer twenty four seven trying to get this 
place cleared off because you know once you get it all done then you got to call the city you got to get your permits you got to get approvals and and you know money's flowing out the window you know with the equipment and everything else and fuel and uh, we were able to pull it off so it worked out really well so, so that was one of our chances. and then the same year the building uh the 41 000 square foot building we got came up for sale the owner came to me just like i asked him he said, look i'm ready to sell you guys want to buy it and uh, that was another expansion so we couldn't pass that up because that connected us all together so so now total what do you have for like acreage and then indoor space do you um, know that number 72,000 square feet of buildings and we have uh 15 acres of land open land so and we're doing what johnny 2500 cars something like that yeah 2500 cars so yeah 200 cars a month, a month. Yeah. so all right and that's uh so they must love you in chicago the tax man oh the all tax. that <laughs> that property right you're a favorite we save it in fuel because the guy who's out in the middle of nowhere driving his parts in i mean yeah they're right there so we're right there and, and we can deliver a lot faster than anybody else so yeah that was our niche you know i mean did you ever you know 20 25 years ago think that it was gonna be this big you no know? not really I, I wanted it to be that big our goal was to be that big and right. you know and we knew the competition was growing you know the consolidators were coming and you know we figured oh boy you know now what and we knew we had to grow to, to either match them or or beat them and uh, and that was our theory so we we went with that and said let's let's make this place grow so we can beat them and yeah. uh, i mean it, it is it is a challenge and you got to take that challenge when it comes to this you know looking you in the eye you got to say yeah i'm gonna do it and uh yeah it was good and you know, and I think again, I mean, those are some good stories, and I'm sure there's some chances you took that probably didn't work at times, right? I mean, oh, we've yeah. all we all have, and, and I'd say all the time, fail, 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 succeed. If you're not failing, you're not trying, right? So I, you know, you, you keep putting, mm -hmm. and if you fall down with something else, you're right back up, and I'm going to go stronger and learn from the lesson. So to me, right. that's just that shows that you know. Uh, the hard work and the drive of somebody is saying, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm pushing the chips in. Um, yeah. And I would say that, you know, a lot of, a lot of that stuff has to do with, you know, your, your people, your, your employees, you know, we've had some employees that have been with us 25, 30 years, which is God bless. I mean, that's like, that's a pat on the back because you're doing something right. Cause they stay out. Yes, it if is. you don't the last we have such great great people working for us. Even me and you know, they, they had great people too. Some of those have retired and me and Anthony have built an organization of great people and uh we're really blessed to have the people that we do and we Yeah, have, and you're only gonna be as good as that team. Right. And and right. and, and it, if people have worked for you that long, that shows your character and how you've taken care of people and what you do for them. People don't stay that long if they don't enjoy being there and like working for you. Exactly. Um, oh, yeah. Well, work well. Right. What's that? I like, go ahead. I'm sorry. I said, I like the word working with you, not for you. Yeah, because yeah. really, it's a team. Right. Yeah, it's definitely a plus. I mean, you know, and like anything else, there's always your bad apples. You know, you, you run into that, you know, which. There's some good stories out there. Where I won't bring yeah, up up up. There. <laughs> yeah. um, so you're, you're doing all that and things are going good. And now you, you and your brother start thinking, well, you know, we want to hand this over. I mean, how did that process go and, and the succession mm -hmm. plan and, and that sort of, I mean, I'm not looking for details on what you sold it to him for, but where was your yeah. mindset? Like, okay, I think I'm ready to kind of semi-retire or is it full retirement or, or what did you do? Well, it was full. We, we decided because we laid out a program years ago in our, um, our corporate minutes on how we were going to do something like this. And, uh, the problem was we only had it if you passed away, you know, if you died. So right. we had to change something. You know? What are we going to do here? <laughs> we had to change a few things in there and say, 
okay, we're going to walk out of here. We're not going to roll out of here. You know? Right. So we end up, uh, we started planning it four, four years before we did it. And, you know, we had some, we had some pros help us out. You know, our, actually our banker was very good. They brought in some people and, and they, they donated a lot of their time to help us because they wanted to keep the, our business, you know, so uh, they were very uh, educational at what doing it. And then, you know, of course, my brother, Jerry, is a CPA, so he has a lot of background in, you know, succession plans and stuff like that. He's done it many a time. So he's helped with that, too. And uh, we started putting everything down on paper, you know, what we wanted, what we needed to, to walk out of here, you know. Yeah, well, me and my brother Tony are fairly healthy, so we could we could have stayed another five years if we wanted to. But you know, time goes fast, you know, and you know, next thing you know, you know, that five years you're not doing as good as you were before. So we said, right. hey. Uh, yeah, I think for me and Anthony, you know, we seen it like, hey, we want to see you guys enjoy life. You know, we know we could make this thing turn. We know we could rock and roll here. We're gonna be able to make the payments. You know, we've we done this our whole life so we just want to see you guys you know enjoy life and uh not ro roll out of here in a box you know like your you know maybe your dad <laughs> place killed him who knows you know with the battles he was going through so you know we just wanted to make it right for them we put a lot of thought into it and you know when you're doing these kind of things you got to compromise a lot you know too because they they have somewhere they want to be in life and me and anthony want somewhere we wanted to be in life and you know we had to meet in the middle on, on some things and it, it was it worked out really well we were very blessed that there wasn't unfortunate there wasn't a lot of fighting and it, it, we just slowed the, made the process go nice and easy and it just and um it, it went really smooth for us it was you know but i think uh, you got to look at both sides of the fence when you're going through a type of deal like that like you know we may not realize something that they you know are really worried about you know like you know to get this deal done and, and we just had to uh you know, kind of take a step back and look at their view. And I think they did the kind of the same thing for us. And, uh, it worked out, it worked out really good. Um, uh, and, you know, we just did a, you know, we leased the property and make our payment to them and it's 10 year, you know, 10 year deal. So, yeah, you know, it's not a, it's not a secret. I mean, people do it all the time and it's, right. like he said, it's 10 years, you know, we got from them, uh, for the business. And then if, they're interested in taking the property in 10 years, they have an option to take the property after that, after the next, for the next 10 years. So we, we, we're covered as far as, you know, our lifestyle and everything else to, to stay somewhat comfortable and uh, do the things that you want to do. Otherwise, you know, what's the sense of leaving? You might as well stay there, you know. That's what I said. Yeah, they're doing the job and they were there. So we felt these are the best, our best guys to do it. You right know, there's things that uh, people don't think about like company cars fuel you know stuff all the little stuff that goes into it you start writing it down on paper you know it starts adding up and you're like oh yeah you know oh, it, it's cars like pay no gas you know you got to make right. Sure things right when you're trying to get the deal done with you know with your right. family and uh well, and phones, all that stuff you know john your dad's generation you know and it's kind of who i worked for you know, was you work hard and you just work, 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 and it's seven days a week. And then sooner or later, the next generation realizes, well, I'm going to work a little smarter than dad and try to not have to work 70 or 80 hours a week. And and with technology and the way things go, I think a lot of times people lose focus of we're in this to run a great business and be a part of the community. But I also want to be able to enjoy my life some. Right. And my children and great and grandkids. I, I'm getting ready to have my second grandchild. I want to be able to enjoy some of these things and not have to work 80 hours a week and work smarter. You know, yeah. and I mean, no, and that, but that goes back to having those good people around you, John. If you didn't have yeah. those people, you know, it's not, I'm not saying that you've enjoyed yourselves over the last 25 years too. You vacation, I've seen your trips to Italy and, and all oh, yeah. the things. So, yeah. Yeah, it's it's a it's a good balance to go there, and it's not you know working eighty hours a week doesn't prove anything to me, you know. A balance proves something to me, and having good people and a good team. Right, yeah, you're right, absolutely. And you don't have a balance, you're right. You got to have a balance. 
We're fortunate. Yeah, we did. I mean, I, I like I said, I we've done a lot of things. That have, uh, we're fortunate because uh, John Jr. and Anthony were both involved in the business, and, and uh, you know, we were able still to get away, you know, and do things, let them run things, and you know, kept throwing the keys at them. You run things. We're going here, and, you know, a little bit at a time. We never, you know, stuck them and worked them to death. We, we let them take a vacation once in a while, too. <laughs> you know? But it should be that way. You should be able to, if you're the owner of something that big, at any time you could just say, I'm going, I'm leaving, I'll be back in three days. And everything right. should run smooth. It That's should. the goal. Um, yeah. so, um, so, John, if you look back all these years, senior, okay. right, you know, what are you most proud of? Like, I mean, is it your accomplishments? Is it what the boys have done? You look back and your father started this and you did this and now the boys are doing it. And who knows if there's going to be another generation. I mean, you've got to play, you got to sit back down and play remember when a little bit. And, you know, what do you. Well, I'm, I'm thankful that we have, I mean, really that we have John Jr. and Anthony to take over and keep the place in the family and. I know that's not the most important thing because of the consolidation in our industry, but you know what? It's important right now, you know, and then something changed down the road, you know, they got to go with the flow, whatever is going on. But uh, that's, that, that's a real, I mean, that was like our goal because the boys came into business and they just loved it. And, you know, he said, well, we're so fortunate to have guys that want somebody in the family that wants to take it. You know, and I could walk in there and feel like I'm still part of it, you know, if I wanted to, but, you know, I, I right. it's theirs. It's theirs now. So I'm proud of them, you know, that they were able to do this and, uh, no. and keep us, keep us uh, comfortable, you know. So that's, uh, yeah. that's a good sign, too. <laughs> you know, because you can see that part of it. <laughs> you know? And you know. what about you, Junior? Right. So it's not like you you only been there for three or four years, too. So I mean, you're looking back, and what are you thankful for, and grateful for, and and proud of? Uh, I'm just grateful for the opportunity they gave us. You know, it's not like uh, you know what I'm grateful for too is they didn't hand it to us. Like we worked for it. You started at the bottom. I'm glad they taught me that. Like they taught me all the little rules and tricks and tips and. Just gave it gave me and Anthony a great opportunity to really, you know, work with them. Obviously, how how often do you get to work with your with your father and your uncle for you know twenty something years and be part of this thing and just brought me to a great you know great organization and taught me taught me the ways you know and I listened to them too you know so um, I guess some of my bigger things that I was kind of I mean we you look at you go back you know five years or doing whatever. Let's just say 12 million and you think you're capped. You think, man, there's no way we're gonna get more. You know, how do we get more? You know? And then sure enough, you you know, times it by two. And now you're going, holy God, I never thought that was possible, you know. Right. And uh, you know, and then all the, the different things that I got the opportunities to be involved with, with our state association being the president of the association, uh PRP being on the board, that was a great. Uh, experience and a good opportunity for me to be part of, uh, you know, going to all those URG events and. Well, you two have both given back to the industry. You've been involved in a lot of that yeah, stuff. Yeah. So again, it's back to where I say, um, is giving back, giving more than you take, and being and being there to share and and give those things, um, and be grateful for what you have. I mean, I, I wrote an article in the magazine of how grateful I am to have friends like you, John, and call people, these guys that help me. I'm grateful for all that. And to be a part of an industry that took me in and gave me those things. And, and it's kind of the point of some of these things now with you guys is I want people to, to reflect back and think about the things that they're grateful for and that they're happy for and the people that have helped them along the way. You know what the people too, like the people in this industry are great. Some of my best friends are in this industry. Like I know I could, I'll call you anytime I wanted to bounce something off you, whether it's personal or or business. And we've done that both with each other in the past. And, you know, Ryan Felt, a great friend of mine, Johnny Bessler, a great friend of mine, somebody, Mark Campbell, a great friend of mine, you know, Mike Campbell. But it's not just the, it's just the people in the, in the industry that make it pretty great, actually. 
yeah. you know, where we could go back and forth and a ton of others too. I mean, there's so many more that are just awesome uh, colleagues and friends. So yeah, great, you know, uh, yeah, so, I look forward to going to the, the shows and the conventions. Yeah. And he got mad at me the last time. I'm like, you gotta stay back. He said, what, what do you mean I gotta stay back? <laughs> but, you know. So I won't go no further with that, but it was a lot of fun. I mean, I, besides learning all the stuff, it was a lot of fun. Yeah, and, and the relationship. So, uh, listen, I I appreciate you two taking a half an hour of your day, Junior. I know you're busy, John. I'm not sure where you're at, like Gold's Gym or something in the background. You're probably in Miami. That's my gym. Look, oh. <laughs> I give you, a, I give you a bird's eye view. <laughs> Oh my goodness! <laughs> well, it, it looks like maybe Junior and I should come hang out with you and get a little bit. But, yeah, um, we do it all the time. It keeps me in shape. Keeps, <laughs> keeps the knees strong, you know. So, yeah, it's it's been a pleasure to have both. Of you. Great. Thank That's you very much, right. Rob. I appreciate it. Anytime. Rob, all right, need us, we're here. All right. Thank I appreciate you. it, guys. Have a great day, everyone. Right. Thanks again for Profit Team. Thanks to the Catalanos for getting on here. Um, Truly good friends and good people and great recyclers and, uh, you know, just good people. So thanks, guys. Thank All you. Right, thank you. Thank you very much.